PLI scheme for large scale electronics manufacturing. You know there was uh, incentives which are being provided from 6% tapering down to 4% uh, on incremental sales of goods and this was to continue for five years. The incentives were to be applicable from 1st August 2020 keeping the base year as 1920. Now we have uh, extended the tenure of the scheme from 2020-21 uh, by one year to 25-26. Earlier it would have ended up in 24-25. Now we have extended it by one more year, so 2025-26. And for those who had uh, investments made even in 2021, they will also get counted in this because we have given them the option of choosing any five years uh, for meeting their production targets under the scheme. So it is open uh, backwards in a way for those who have come in earlier into the scheme and also continues for the next five years. So this is for large-scale electronics manufacturing. The companies which were not able to achieve the targets within the given time had very many legitimate reasons and therefore the extension has come in. The, extent, the reasons are given in the uh, explanatory notes with which you will get the uh, press release. The next one is uh, for extending uh, support to the National Export Insurance Account, which shall now give greater cover. It shall underwrite additionally to the extent of 33,000 crores for all project exports. You know India is doing very well in terms of project exports. In most of the African countries and countries in the Middle East, Indian project exports are doing very well. They need a greater support through the insurance covers. The cover which is being uh, credit cover which is being provided by Exim Bank for project exports will now additionally benefit for the next five years uh, with this underwriting uh, which they can undertake for an additional 33,000 crores of project exports. So this is being given in order to immediately ramp up India's capacity to extend project exports and to give them enough cover. A very uh, critical institution for the Northeastern agricultural development, again aiming at farmers and farmers' income, the Northeastern Regional Agricultural Marketing Corporation, this is in short normally called as NERA MAC. It was established in 82, but uh, in spite of some good work, they've been uh, suffering for want of uh, support and assistance. As a result, Northeast farmers have had little access to good facilitation. This institution has established 75 farmer producer organizations already in the region, and it's also credited with having 13 GI uh, crops registered for the GI's uh, you know, receiving patents. Now, this uh, institution is getting a 77.45 crore infusion as a revival package so that financial restructuring can be done, infusion of funds help them, and they can also uh, prepare such business plans to give 10 to 15 percent more price to farmers by bypassing middlemen. Because of the location of the northeastern uh, uh, states, it is most often that the middlemen who reach them and therefore they lose out on the price advantage which they can otherwise have because their crops are normally organic and very good. Now, if this organization is revived, we expect that farmers would be better placed in terms of selling their produce. Next item relates to extension of the Atmanirvar Bharat Rojgar Yojana. You would remember that in October last year, we had announced that to incentivize employers for creation of jobs or to restore the lost employ employment, which is registered under the EPFO, we had extended a scheme wherein we estimated about 58 lakh, 58.50 lakh of uh, 
beneficiaries would be uh, taken in and they would get this benefit. And who are the beneficiaries? Uh, those who draw a salary much lesser than 15,000, 15,000 or lesser per month. Uh, and uh, both in that case for such employers and employees, wherein the establishment had less than 1,000 employees, the total of 24% of wages will be paid by the government, meaning the employer's share and the employee's share. Whereas if the unit had more than 1,000 employees, again for all those who had 15,000 rupees per month salary, 12% of the wages, which is the employee's contribution alone, will be paid by the government. Now, as it is, since October till today, till not today so much, 18th of June, about 21.42 lakh beneficiaries have benefited, and they are spread around 79,577 establishments. So this scheme now, which was valid till 30th June 2021, which is in another few days it was to get over, we are extending the scheme till 31st March 2022. The next one also pertains to tourism sector. For the visas which are, uh, once we start a visa issuance uh, again, the first 5 lakh tourists tourist visas will be issued totally free of charge. This will benefit for any tourist only once. The scheme will be applicable till 31st March 2022 or till the first 5 lakh of visas get covered. In other words, till 31st March 2022 or till the first 5 lakh tourist visas are issued, everyone gets free tourist visa. Beyond that, of course, the usual regular charges will apply. So this, I think, uh, will have a, a great uh, incentivizing impact on those short-term tourists who come in for just with a, uh, a month, one-month visa. Totally new scheme. This is a credit guarantee scheme to facilitate loans through the MFIs, microfinance institutions. We aim to reach out to 25 lakh uh, persons who are absolutely small, smallest borrowers from the MFI. And uh, this would be a maximum loan of 1.25 lakh uh, lakhs to an individual. And uh, the rate will be at least 2% below the maximum rate which is prescribed by the RBI. Uh, so the focus of this will be on new lending and not on repayment of old loans. Clearly, all kinds of stressed uh, accounts can also benefit from it, and that is why we have mentioned that all defaulters also, so long as they are 89 days or less, meaning if the default is only within the 89 days, even they get covered, which means only the NPAs will not be covered, stressed will also be covered. Now, this uh, entire scheme will be till 31st March 2020 or till such a time the 7,500 crores of guarantee which is getting issued is exhausted. Either this or that, whichever is the earliest. Uh, the guarantee which is being given is up to 75% of the default amount and this duration is for three years. The loan duration is for three years. So we hope to cover 25 lakh, the smallest of small MFI uh, clients, which means MFIs are normally widely spread in the hinterland, which is really the smallest uh, you know, towns, very small towns, and therefore we want to reach out to them, and that is best done through the MFI. And that is why we've taken this route. To 1.1 lakh crore guarantee, which is being given for particularly COVID affected sectors. And in that, health sector with a 50,000 crore cover receives uh, attention for scaling up medical infrastructure. Here, 
the focus is on eight non-metropolitan, meaning other than eight metropolitan cities, the health and medical infrastructure in all other areas, all other towns, tier two, tier three, will be focused. So we are not looking at the eight metropolitan, we are looking at all others. Here the guarantee coverage will be for projects which are totally new, up to 75% coverage, and projects which are only expansion will get 50% coverage. The loan which will be given will be to a maximum amount of 100 crores. This guarantee will last for three years, and the interest rate for this health sector is about 7.5. It's capped at 7.95%. And if the focus within this is on aspirational districts, whether it is expansion or for new projects, 75% cover is being provided. And therefore, uh, 7.95 being the interest cap, the top cap being given, considering that without this guarantee, you would have had to pay 10 to 11% interest. If this is for the health sector, we are also extending this to all other sectors where 60,000 crores is being dedicated for the cover for that. But here the interest cap is at 8.25%. So all other uh, details will be given out in the due course within a short span of time.